So hello friends, I am Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan from Nandadeep uh, Peko Training Institute and uh, we saw this video a few days back and uh, uh, my colleague's video who is going to operate on the intuition cataract and I asked for your advices and you can see the original video and your advices you can click on this uh, YouTube link and uh, this is in short what happened it was intuition cataract to start with the capsule was stained then the first nick was made and uh, this first flap when the colleague tried to get it back it got extended despite the efforts so the surgeon tried to make another tear on the other side and subsequently that too got extended and then there was complete Argentinian flag sign so in this video what I'll be doing give you my approach towards this particular case like for every step during the video how I would have approached so let's start with the beginning I think staining was perfect and if you stain these mature white cataracts well it definitely helps in visualization also makes the capsule little bit maybe brittle and you don't necessarily have to press over the cornea as the surgeon was doing basically the surgeon was trying to uniformly spread the tripan blue over the anti capsule and staining under the air is a good idea because the dye gets concentrated in the area over the capsule and also avoids endothelial damage if there is any with this dye now about the first nick so what the surgeon has done here nick started right in the center which is good and then the surgeon extended that tear towards the periphery which is again perfect I think the surgeon went little bit too far here I might have just stopped somewhere here or what I might have done is a kind of a cruciate incision so that uh, there is no single tear where the internal lenticular pressure which is high will exert its pressure so I think what I will do here in this case is make a cruciate incision take a 27 gauge cannula and uh, aspirate the fluid which is there the liquid cortex to reduce the internal lenticular pressure I will do the same from the second side port as well and this will decompress the intumescent lens which is very helpful in these cases again the choice of OVD here is uh, for me it is the combination of 3% chondrite and 4% hyaluronate which is viscoat or hyalucoat because it's a heavy OVD it will press over the anterior capsule so the first step basically is to make a cruciate incision from the smile small side pores which is good if we use the main incision here there is a high chance that the visco starts leaking out and these are the cases where it's uh, there is higher risk of uh, extension so I generally avoid using the main incision for capsular axis for these kind of cases use a small side ports where the chance of leakage is less is always a better idea so the first mistake which happened was uh, a bit of uh, larger size of the first flap going into periphery which should have been avoided here now here what the surgeon did is uh, injected more OVD I think it was actually not needed sometimes this uh, 
over injection of uh, methyl cellulose in the anterior chamber is uh, risky because when you use methyl cellulose and over inflate the anterior chamber in fact there will be more forces acting on this capsular tear making it go outward this is because you are pushing the zonules back by over inflating the anterior chamber so don't over inflate the anterior chamber just make sure that there is no hypotony and now here what the surgeon is trying to do is uh, go from the main incision because uh, probably this angle is not working for the surgeon So what I would do in such case is go from the left side port and this requires little bit of ambidextrity that means you should be able to use both your hands and that is what every surgeon should learn because it definitely helps. As you can see here now the capsular axis is already going into zonules so at this point if I want to pull it back the right approach will be going from the left side port hold the flap here with a micro capsular axis forceps and pull forcefully towards the center that is what is going to bring the flap back now inability to use the left hand is a problem here and you can't go from the main incision because uh, the moment you go in visco is going to leak out and uh, capsule is which is already in the zonules might go to the post posterior capsule so this is a situation where you should use the left hand again more viscoelastic but you can see the rexis has already gone so the surgeon has given up hope here though I might have tried a quick pull technique here and still the surgeon has not taken out the fluid from the lens and now the surgeon is trying to do that but of course it's already quite late and don't do this a surgeon trying to take out the fluid from the main incision you can see here so it has multiple problems because visco is going to come out while this fluid is being aspirated AC is going to be even shallower and then we can expect this tear to extend and uh, even this tear should have been made tangentially like this rather than radially which the surgeon made so these are the mistakes which happen during the course right from starting with a very large and extending into periphery the first flap and then not uh, doing the decompression of the intralenticular pressure which is a uh, not a good thing to do in such cases because you are going to get Argentinian flag sign otherwise so I think we all saw the case and how it was approached and how we can approach it little differently to have a better outcome and these cases intumescent cataracts have to be planned uh, either you can use the method I described that make a cruciate puncture and then aspirate from the side ports using 27 gauge cannula either uh, connecting it to a aspiration tubing or you can use the syringe or you can do a small first uh, capsular axis very small tiny capsular axis then aspirate the fluid and then make a cut and enlarge the capsular axis which is called two stage axis so you can use either of these two preferred OVD in these cases is either 1.8 percent hyaluronate or uh, hyalucoat which is combination of 3 percent chondrate and 4 percent hyaluronate so use good OVD to achieve a very 
reproducible capsular axis in all these cases it's very important uh, because we are going to get uh, these cases in our surgical list and uh, some of these patients may uh, opt for a premium IL like multifocal toric or toric multifocals so in such cases a good capsular axis is must for a long term stability of these IOLs so uh, always try to do a perfect capsular axis even in these cases uh, and another important point to be learned from the video is uh, always uh, use your non-dominant hand so you have to train your non-dominant hand because it helps in tricky situations like this so i hope uh, this video was helpful to you for more such videos do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you